All right, let's run through the solution for example eight, sketching the region enclosed by the graph of x is equal to y to the fourth, y is equal to the square root of two minus x and y is equal to zero. So there's the first part of this thing. We got a graph, something. All right, let's take this x is equal to y to the fourth. So like we saw before, think of it instead as y is equal to x to the fourth, which would be a really fat bottomed looking parabola like something like that, right? But if we switch the x and the y, it basically takes the inverse of that thing and it, uh, it's going to open up towards the right instead. I didn't make that fat enough, right? So it's going to open up sideways instead of uh, to, to the upward position. Well, that didn't even make any sense. Okay, so let's start making a graph like this. And uh, with some purple, make this thing kind of fat bottomed like so. I'm not trying to shame it in any kind of way. All right, there we go. So here's this part checked off. Of course, you could solve that thing for y, but then you're graphing yourself a, a fourth root of x, which, of course, you probably know on the top of your head what that thing looks like. All right, and the other one is just the square root function. That one's pretty easy to graph. So a square root function, as we talked about before, is just going to open up either towards the right or towards the left. This one is towards the left because we have a negative x here. And we're going to move that thing off towards the right two spaces. Here we go. All right, and then with green here. And this is just the top half of it. It's not the top and the bottom half, so it is just this part here. All right, so that square root function. So here's our region, and we're going to color that thing in. Make it look pretty. Okay, nice. Um, and now, which are we going to use? Are we going to use a vertical representative rectangle or horizontal one? If we use a vertical one, then notice that we would have to break this region up at this point of intersection that's right here. And actually, you don't even have a top minus a bottom. You would just integrate wherever this point of intersection is. I may not have drawn this exactly to scale because I think it actually intersects at one. Anyway, we'll see. Um, you know, you'd have to integrate just the purple function here from zero to whatever that point of intersection is, and then the green one from that point of intersection over here to two. It'd be easy to do. Wouldn't be as painful as the other one. Or, alternatively, we can just do a right minus a left with a horizontal representative rectangle and a delta y. Right? Because now you have a very clear right side versus a left side which corresponds to our old top and our old bottom. We just need to figure out what we're going to integrate, like our limits of integration. The bottom one here is zero, clearly, because it does say that we're going to start with y is equal to zero. And then we just need to find this point to intersection. So we need to see where the graphs intersect each other. So we'll do the same thing that we did, you know, for all of the other problems, basically. We're going to set these things equal to each other. Let's see, we got it kind of an issue here. Um, let's see. I've got x is equal to stuff over here, and then, then I have y is equal to this stuff over here. So you've got tons of options on how it is that you want to tackle this. One of the probably obvious things that you could do here is you could take this y, the square root of 2 minus x, and you can plug it in here. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'd have, whoops, our first function x is equal to y to the fourth, take out this y, replace it with this other y here, the square root of x, the square root of 2 minus x. And then we would raise it to the fourth power. All right, if we raise this to the fourth power, actually here, let's think of this instead. Maybe you wrap your head around this. We're going to square it and then square it again because the square, the first square is going to cancel out the square root there and then the second square is going to square it again. So we have x is equal to 2 minus x and that, that is going to be squared now. All right. Now, this may not be the best way to do it and the reason why is because when we're all done, we're going to get x values here and we don't actually want x values. We want y values. So when we're done with this process, we're going to have to plug it back into one of these functions in order to find what the y value is. I mean, it's not too big of a headache, but it is something that we'll have to consider. All right, so let's uh, square out this right-hand side. We would have a 4 minus a 4x and then plus x squared. You'd have to subtract over your x and then do your little factoring. Let's rearrange our stuff. So x squared 
When I subtract, I'm going to have minus 5x and then plus 4. And it looks like it's going to factor as x noise again. Uh, so um, it just made this this really, really nice little chime in my ear. I think it means my batteries are dying. <laughs> Maybe I should charge the thing. Anyway, minus 1 and x minus 4, I do believe. Okay. All right. And then um, so our x values obviously are 1 and 4. Again, those are our x values. The 4, though, doesn't make any sense because x equals 4 is way over here, and I can see that that's going to be an extraneous answer. And that happens sometimes when you're solving these square root functions. Remember, from Algebra 2, you introduce a, an extraneous answer whenever you do this little squaring process. So I'm just going to get rid of this one. x equals 1 is the one that we want to keep, but we don't want the x value. We want the y value. So how am we going to find the y value from this x value? Well, we have an equation that relates our x's and our y's. Either one of these equations, we can plug it back in. And let's just do that. So if I plug in our x in here, beep, 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 and then solve that thing for y is equal to y to the fourth. Just take the fourth root of 1. The fourth root of 1 is 1. Well, it just turns out to be 1. So not really drawn to scale. This point right here should have been a 1, comma 1. So it should have been actually like right there. So we'll say that's what that is. So this is a 1. Right. Uh, once again, this is not the only algebraic way that you could have solved for this point of intersection right here. You could have also, let's say, taken the, uh, let's say, no, square both sides of this thing and then solve this thing for x, and then you can set your two x's equal to each other. Maybe that's the way you wanted to tackle that, and maybe that's the way you did tackle that. Who knows? I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't watching you. Anyway, I am ready to finally solve this problem. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1. Remember, it's the bottom value to the top value here from 0 to 1. Our right-hand function is the green one. The green one is the, uh, I got a problem. If I'm doing this with respect to y, I can't leave it like this. I have to solve that thing for y. So let me do that right over here. y is equal to the square root of 2 minus x. So let's solve this thing for y. No, solve it for x. We can get it as a function of y. That's what I mean to say. I don't know what just happened there. All right, so we're going to have to square both sides. So y squared is equal to 2 minus our x. Let's switch, just basically switch the positions between the x and the y squared. So x is equal to a 2 minus y squared. That's our top function. It's the green thing that's right there. 2, that's a mess, 2 minus y squared minus our uh bottom function, which is really our left-hand side, and uh, that one is clearly this y to the fourth that's right there. So minus y to the fourth, right in with a laser pointer, because you know that's what I do, and then let's integrate that with respect to y. All right, we're ready. So you can see that this turns into a pretty simple problem once we've gotten it set up. It's just getting it set up. That's the tough part. All right, so integrating, we have a 2y minus a y cubed over 3 minus a y to the fifth over five. And it's very, very convenient that we have a zero to plug in. I am going to fundamentally apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, whatever. So two times one minus one cubed one third minus one fifth. Why do I even write that? Okay, whatever. So I need a common denominator. It's going to be 15. This will be 30 over 15 minus uh, 5 over 15, and then minus 3 over 15. Uh, that's a 25. 25 minus 3 more of those things is, wait, 25 minus 25. Oh, yeah, 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 it's 22. Yeah. Okay, 22 over 15. Wow, the tough part of that actually turned out to be the arithmetic. All right, is that what you got? I hope it is, because I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Okay. Um, to wrap this thing up, we're finding area between two curves. And when we're finding the area between two curves, uh, I would suggest that you do draw in yourself a representative rectangle. And now we've added a bit of a complication here, because we have to decide whether our 
representative rectangle is a vertical one or if it's a horizontal one. And the way that I'm going to be able to tell is whether or not we're dealing with functions of x versus functions of y. In this particular case, we had functions of y.